Hello, and welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. I'm Kirsten Howe, and I'm here with Madison Gunn. This is a special uh, celebrity edition of Absolute Trust Talk. We've gotten lots of positive feedback about um, a few episodes that we've done kind of recently where we talked about celebrity or famous person's estate plans. And for example, we did one about Elvis Presley and I heard from a lot of listeners that they really, really enjoyed that one. And frankly, we really enjoy doing them. They're fun, um, less dry than some of the other episodes that we do. So, and the other thing is there are always lessons that we can pull out of these uh, studies of celebrity estate plans. So we're here today to do another one of those. We're going to talk about the estate plan of Senator Dianne Feinstein. She died last week, as you probably know. And what we're going to focus on today is there is some litigation pending between the senator and her for her deceased husband's estate. And so we're going to talk about what happens now to that litigation now that she has passed away. And just as a recap, in case you uh, missed it, um, Diane Feinstein's husband, Richard Bloom, he died uh, about a year and a half ago in February of 2022. And he had two trusts that we know about. The first one was a joint trust with his wife, Senator Feinstein, just like everybody else, a joint married couples trust. It owned some property. It owned their home in San Francisco and it owned a vacation home in Stinson Beach and some other things that aren't as relevant to this conversation. So he had that joint trust. He also had a separate trust and he was in control of that. That was written by him. He could change it anytime he wanted. It owned certain assets um, that aren't really relevant to this conversation either. But so he had two trusts, a joint trust and his own separate trust. The joint trust said when Richard dies, we're going to split this joint trust into two shares. One is Diane's share. One is Richard's share. Diane's share goes to her separate trust. Richard's share goes to his separate trust. And those properties that come from the joint trust are going to be held in trust for Diane's benefit for her lifetime. She gets all of the income from those properties. And she also gets additional trust property enough to make sure that she gets $1.5 million per year. So she gets the income plus probably some principal to bring her up to one and a half million dollars a year. Okay. So that's the basis. That's the trust background. Seems fairly straightforward. And yet, as I said, there is litigation. So Madison, um, talk to us about what the litigation is. Well, there are two petitions. Let's talk about the first one. Yeah. So the first petition is regarding the joint revocable trust between Senator Feinstein and Richard Bloom. Um, it, it was filed by Catherine Feinstein, who is the co-trustee of the trust, and it was filed against her other co-trustee, so who was a fiduciary. Um, she is a, alleging that, or not alleging, she is saying that the trust is has not been split so obviously she's saying that the trust hasn't been divided in between the um richard blum revoke separate trust and diane feinstein's revocable trust she's also alleging that or requesting that they the court give them permission as trustees to sell the stinson beach property which is very okay. specific it's the only specific asset point of the petition that they brought up Right. And so the joint trust owns four properties, at least that I can think of. But the only one that is specifically addressed in the petition is the Stinson Beach. Senator Feinstein's daughter, Catherine, is asking the court to say, you got to sell that property. Why? Why are they asking for that? Yeah, because the property is to go 50 percent into Senator Feinstein's trust and 50 percent into Richard's trust. Senator Feinstein at this point is not looking for a vacation home. She's not interested in using it. So she is not wanting to pay the costs associated with that, you know, taxes, upkeep, maintenance, 
Um, not that any of us have houses on the beach, but they have a lot more maintenance than our regular homes inland. Um, <laughs> you get a lot of saltwater upkeep. You get so, repainted every year. Yeah. Yeah. So she is not looking for that and she wants to sell the property. She's not using it. So it's now just a, considered a vacant property. And under the separate trust where the property is to be held in trust for her, she is the only one allowed to use it. So that okay. she wants to get rid of it. Okay, so now let's talk about what's happening, what will happen to this litigation. Catherine Feinstein, co-trustee, suing her co-trustee now that her mother has died. Right, so this litigation will be able to continue because she's the co-trustee, you know, before and after Senator Feinstein's death, that doesn't change who the co-trustee is or the, who the trustees are in general, um, she will, be able to maintain that lawsuit. So the trust provides continuity for the trustees, which allows them to just continue on to administer the trust, or in this case, continue on with the litigation to force the administration of the trust. Okay. All right. And as I mentioned, there are two petitions. That was the first one. Tell us a little bit about the second one. Yeah. So the second petition is also filed by Catherine Feinstein on behalf of Diane Feinstein. But in this case, she's filing it on behalf of Senator Feinstein using a power of attorney. And it is not as any type of trustee. It's filing it on Senator Feinstein's behalf as a beneficiary of Richard's separate property trust. So it's a little bit of a different mechanism, even though it's still, you know, Catherine Feinstein versus whoever the trustees Trustee. of that trust mm -hmm. are. Um, and sh there she is suing for Senator Feinstein's rights as the, as her beneficiary. One, because, because that trust hasn't been funded per the first lawsuit, Senator Feinstein is not receiving that 1.5 million in income that she, or in uh, income and principal that she is entitled to. Um, and so that is, obviously an issue. I think the news has been putting it out as she's requesting her medical expenses be paid. It's just that she was due this money she didn't get paid. So they were asking it to be reimbursed out of what she would be owed. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, she's filing and also filing for an accounting, which beneficiaries are typically entitled to in a trust administration. So okay. she's uh, both cases are fighting for the trustee to do their job. <laughs> Basically. Right. Right. But in the first instance, it's the co-trustee saying, hey, my my my, my counterpart co here isn't doing yeah. their job. I'm here. I'm ready to do my job. He's not doing his job. Right. In the second case, it's the beneficiary saying, you got to pay me my money. And it just so happens that the beneficiary's agent under a power of attorney is doing this for her. But it's really Diane Feinstein is the is the petitioner. Right, because she's the beneficiary. Right. And okay, so with this one, what's going to happen now that Senator Feinstein has died? Right. So as we've discussed on here before, power of attorney is only good as long as the person granting that power is alive. So because Senator Feinstein passed away, the power of attorney that Catherine Feinstein is using to initiate the lawsuit is no longer valid. Um, and then that means that Catherine no longer has the grounds or standing to step in her mother's shoes to file, to maintain this lawsuit. So she will have to file a petition for probate in the court in order to get, become named the executor for Senator Feinstein's estate. And as executor, she can then step in her shoes for that lawsuit. Essentially any money due to Senator Feinstein as a result of winning that lawsuit would have been owed to her during her lifetime. And so the only way it can go to her, let's say her trust would be through her estate, which is, a pro which is, you know, the legal word for probate <laughs> or right. what we're using it for. <laughs> okay. So Catherine has to open a probate in order to have the legal ability to continue to pursue this lawsuit on behalf of her now deceased mother right. and recover the money and also be able to negotiate whatever check is written to Senator Feinstein. It's going to, the check will be written to the estate of Senator Feinstein. Right. And so her will will then say where that check goes. 
Okay. You know. And we don't know. We haven't seen her will. Um, okay. So now um, we've we've learned a few lessons along the way. First of all, don't you know, avoid litigation. It's not good. <laughs> but second, like what what Madison? Um, let's just encapsulate this a little bit. Yeah. So like to summarize, you know. Um, there were two lawsuits filed by Catherine Feinstein against Richard Blum's estate or his trusts. In the first lawsuit, Catherine Feinstein is the co-trustee um, of the joint trust between Diane Feinstein and Richard Blum, and she is suing her other co-trustee for inaction. Um, and now that Senator Feinstein has passed away, that lawsuit will go on because Catherine is still the co-trustee and the trust provides continuity for before and after death. So she will be able to continue that lawsuit. So the second lawsuit filed by Catherine Feinstein is she's acting on behalf of her mother, Senator Feinstein, using a power of attorney, um, suing for Senator Feinstein's rights as a beneficiary under her late husband, Richard Blum's trust, separate property trust. Um, and Catherine's option, because now that Senator Feinstein has passed away, the power of attorney she's using is no longer valid. So her only option is to file a probate so the court can grant her an order that she is the executor for Senator Feinstein's estate, and she can then continue that lawsuit. Um, any money received through that lawsuit will have to go through probate completely and get itself into Senator Feinstein's estate because it was due to her during her life. Now that we have the complicated litigation regarding Senator Feinstein and her late husband, Richard Blum's estates, summarized, we wanted to take an opportunity to discuss some estate planning, an estate planning lesson that results from this that has an application to regular old people like us. Kirsten, what is that um, opportunity, that the lesson that we learned? Well, I, I would say, you know, and we read these two trusts and they are very well written. They're very complicated. It seems as though they thought of everything and yet here is this problem. And I think that perhaps there was not a conversation within the family about, well, you know, what do you want to happen to the Stinson Beach property? We see this a lot. Real estate tends to be a problem. Trying to keep real estate in the family. Some want to, some don't. Maybe a conversation could have happened while both Diane Feinstein and her husband, Richard Bloom, were alive and sit all the kids down. What do you want? That sets expectations, if nothing else. You know, maybe the parents wouldn't want to accommodate the children's wishes, but at least the children would know ahead of time this is what's going to happen. Also, if what he wanted was for Senator Feinstein to have as much flexibility as possible, he could have said in the trust, if she wants to sell the Stinson Beach property, she gets to. So there, there just are a few, you know, sort of planning opportunities. I think that communication is probably the takeaway that the more you can communicate about what you want, what you think your kids want, <laughs> um, the better. Oftentimes being surprised is, is, um, a big part of why people react badly, not so much because of what is said, but because they weren't, they didn't see it coming. Right. So this communication ahead of time, I think is the yeah. lesson here. That surprise results in high emotions. Yes. And that results in lawsuits. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Okay. And anything you want to add to that medicine? No, I think that was great. It's I'm sure much more will shake out over the next several months. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep you up to date. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling.